Here's a couple more of these uh, playing card devices. These are both topology ones, and they're very clever indeed. One's like that, one's like that. I'll do that second, I think. But the first one is just a card with two panels cut out. And a magician who gave it to me said, the idea is you, you or your, your audience put their fingers through like that. And if you're the magician, you do the magic. But if you're the audience, you say to them, is it possible for me to turn this card around so that without you letting go with your finger and thumb, it appears the other way around? Is that possible? Without you letting go, I let go then. Well, it is possible, but when I was doing it several times, I find the card is just not flexible enough to do it satisfactorily. So I had to do a little development, which was make something out of uh, a kind of plastic stuff, which won't tear. It's exactly the same device, except it's blank on one side and strapped on the other side. But so I'll use this one to demonstrate. Fingers through there. The challenge is, without letting go of my thumb and my forefinger, how can I change it round so that it's facing the other way and you get the stripes towards you? Well, we'll have a go. It's actually very easy, and if you're in practice, you can do it in about two seconds flat, maybe a bit longer. What's going to happen is this, is, this top bit is going to pass through the window there. It's in a bit of a muddle, but it's okay. Pass it through, oops, there's it. Twist you round, 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 round. There's a nice halfway pose, which I'll come back to. And there it is, done. And on the way back, I'll stop halfway because there's a nice little bit. This bit here goes through the panel, and you twist the whole card around, but at no time does your thumb and finger part. They stay locked together, holding the thing together. So pass it through there, around there, bit round like that. Do it one more time because I like that halfway position. It's sort of artistic. Maybe that's what I like this one here. You've got two little loops, Daisy. Two little loops, which is rather nice, isn't it? And then when you undo the loops, the job's finished and you turn the card around. So it works really better, although the original was magicians using a card, a playing card for it. It works better with this material, this plastic you can't tear. So have a go yourselves. We'll make it a paper to start with, but um, for playing card is a bit too thick. It's a lovely topology item. The second one is much more developed. This is a trapdoor one by Robert Neal. Very, very original idea. The idea is, again, to turn the thing around without letting go of this tab. You're supposed to, you've presently got the underside, the back of the card on the bottom, and the top of the top, and you're supposed to be able to move it to that position there with the back of the card on the top now, and the front of the back, but without letting go. And it's done by four little folds, four distinct folds. The top panel, the side panel, the other side panel, and the bottom panel, that little thing. And then you undo from the top, and you find, amazingly, that the whole thing is turned upside down. That's astonishing. Very clever idea. This top panel, two sides and the bottom, turn it over and it's done. So a magician, Terry Rogers, who sadly no longer with us, created a wonderful magic trick out of this using cards. This is a book which described it, Stargate, she called it. And it really is the same thing, but writ large, I think. This shows two stage cards, big ones, which have been joined together. Here's the back of the cards. Here's the two fronts of the cards. This one, the two of clubs, is going to pass through the hole and appear on this side so the cards change places and now the front of the cards will be face to face and you'll see the back of the cards. Same piece. Three, three little folds, no, four little folds. Bottom panel, side panel, side panel, top panel. Turn it over and undo it. Dum, ba dum, ba dum, ba dum. Now we've got that situation. Very nice, with the front of the card inside. There's two more developments of this idea. One is from a lovely guy who I corresponded with and talked to on the phone, actually, called um, Harry Frank, a New York magician. No, he's not New York. He's somewhere in the Midwest, I think. But he made a very nice Christmas card idea where you sent a Christmas card to someone and point out that Santa Claus is somehow stuck behind the fireplace, he's got stuck in the flue. How can he get through down the chimney to give you your presents? 
Well, you can see with that picture, the square in the middle, all you're going to do is fold those two cards. This bit here is going to come to the front, and then it's done. So here we go, three folds, bottom fold, side fold, side fold, top fold. Turn it over. And here he is, in the last, released from his prison in the side of the room. Very nice idea. <laughs> and I had a little think about this. This was 20 years ago I came across that and thought of the idea of possibly doing double lots of folds. Look at the two different sizes here. This is the one which has got double, it's a much smaller window inside and a much bigger one there. And you achieve that by having lots and lots of fussy bits. You have to do the top, sides, bottom twice over. The card, I can do it, but it's a little bit fussy. So I think what I'd rather do is show the whole thing with a bit of light paper, which is easier to cope with. This is two bits of um, origami paper, which have been joined together with the same thing. A small window, which looks ridiculously small. And it's the orange card we see with all those fold lines that's going to do the heavy folding. So it's two lots of folding at this time. It's the initial fold is just as far as there. Now you just do the two side bits, just the outside bit of the side bits, not the whole thing, because you're going to do it in two stages, like that. And then the bottom fold, oops, like that, I think, yeah. And then you repeat the thing again. This time the top bit comes over completely masking the hole that's going to go through. And then you've got two side bits to do, a side bit there and a side bit there. And finally that bit has a good old bunch there. When you turn the card over and undo it, two lots of undoings, you find that the pieces have changed round almost magically. There, curiously, they're sort of undertucked due to the geometry of the thing. You have to undertuck them, but you do definitely get two cards, two bits of paper. They swap round, and you've got the colours on the outside and the plain sides on the inside. So this orange bit has gone through there. It makes me think that somehow it's something similar to getting a handkerchief to go through a hole like that, push, pull it through like that. But it's it's cleverer than that because you're actually doing it with bits of paper, folding the paper, and you get that extraordinary effect. So two very nice typological tricks there. That's the one that hasn't yet been developed very far, I don't think. But this one has been very nicely developed into at least three different variations. So more work to be done on this one, I feel. Have a go. Thank <laughs> you.